Did you think to yourself, like, I'm going to become an artist and this is going to be my profession and this is what I'm going to pursue? N not at all. Wynwood Walls here in Miami is a beautiful place that has a collection of artwork from people all over the world and has built this global community. But there's one artist in particular that I have had the privilege of speaking with, Ernesto Moranje, who is a Cuban-American artist who was born and raised in Miami and pursued art at the age of 28. He's been doing it for six years. And the art that he creates is so intricate and so multi-layered and really representative of what it means to experience a multi-layered community and create something that is really bigger than yourself. So we're here to talk to Ernesto about his work, but also about what it means to deliver on that impact and to really build on a sense of belonging. So the, the whole story really was that I was introduced to art it, it, not in the most ideal way. I was 28 and I had a problem in the Coast Guard which had to do with me getting discharged, me uh, facing um, certain charges for mistakes I made. I was in a tough place uh, mentally. Um, I, didn't, I didn't really have a good outlet yeah. for any type of expression, which I was never introduced to. And someone just passed on a job of painting the California flag in some windows in one of the mechanic shops. I took on that job and those were the probably till that day in my life, aside from family and friends. Yeah best days of my life. You really? Know, um, I was in a trance. I always, I always felt as a Miamian, you know, a Miami person, but I didn't really have anything that, that did attach me to Miami aside from my family. So when I came back from the military and I started making art, I, I, I noticed that my bond with Miami, it just, it got stronger. Mm. I mean, I said, I'm going to chase this feeling. So mm. every day I was just painting. I, I wasn't drawing yet because since I was painting, I think there was something about me pushing an actual physical paint, not just drawing, um, that just put me in a spell. So that's basically what I, what I do, you know. I, I like to really, it's, it's a play with color, it's a play with shape, um, yeah. and it's just building. And I, I, I don't mind making mistakes because then I fix it. So of course people are going to come up to you while you're doing this. What does that mean to you when people come up to you while you're making a mural? And how does their energy become a part of it? My, my interaction with the people definitely has a lot to do with it. Sometimes it gets really deep and I end up talking to people, you know, five, 10, 20 minutes or more. And sometimes it's, they just give me their opinion on yeah. the wall, whether they like it, whether they don't like They'll it. They'll tell you they don't like it? Yes, absolutely. What's your response? Um, to just give it a minute because I'm on my first layers normally is when that's but happening. But do you care it's very if they dark. like it? I do, I do. And, and, and you see, that's, it makes me work a little harder. When you reflect on it, who exactly is making this? Everything that's going on right now, all these noises, all these people, all these, um, the, the sun in my face, uh, all that stuff combined with what I already know the concept is, uh, is behind this, it, it just works together to, to become a piece. and. Um, the, the story also unfolds as it goes. Understanding that everything I will do, I will edit and I, I will have to correct. So I, I try to get past that whole disappointment part and I know I'm going to have to struggle to, to learn to, it. Yeah, you know, I don't, to get to that. There's no way you can pick this up in a day. Totally. It's, it's just like a language. 